Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1-10. through 10. The Reverend Robert Zagor is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In the favorable time I listened to you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance and affliction, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. Through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors, and yet we are true, as unknown yet well-known as dying. But behold, we live. As punished, yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, but possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is one of those places that my wife, when she was interpreting for the deaf in my congregation that I was serving last, would pull her hair out and say, What is he saying? Because we don't even really know with any certainty what Paul is saying in verse 1 when he says working together with him. Is it us working together with God? Are we working together with Paul? Is Paul working together with God? What is he saying? And there's no real way from the grammar to be able to tell. And honestly, it doesn't matter because that's not his point. His point isn't, hey, you get to work with God. His point is, pay attention to what's going on. This is the day. Don't save your fire for some distant time or some distant land. This is the day. We are unfaithful if we believe that we're saving all of this for a distant time or a distant place. This is the day is the day. And God has called you to this day. Of course, being called to this day, we also have an abundance of opportunities along with abundance of distress. And this causes people no end of confusion because we're reared in a theology of glory. We believe that as long as we're on God's side, everything should go well. And so we have these plastic Jesus smiles that we, that we paste on our faces and we say, everything is going okay, and we start singing, I have peace like a river. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's at least a very rigorously rapid-filled river. It doesn't mean that you're going to have everything go well. In fact, Paul is the guy about whom God said, I will show him how much he must suffer for my sake. If you think that getting into church work is getting into easy work, then you're in the wrong place. And that's true with everybody, honestly, not just church workers. The fact of the matter is everybody suffers no matter what, no matter who. It's only the people of God who can point to a divine purpose behind it. You will suffer. You will struggle. You will go through hardships. Paul just went through the list. Did you hear that? Who wants that stuff? If this was the job ad in the newspaper, would you apply? 
beatings, riots, sign me up. Standing in the middle of war zones, yeah! Imprisonment, bring it on. Is that really what we want? Is that the peace that we think that we're getting from Jesus? Because this is the guy who got nailed to the cross and called all sorts of terrible things by everybody, lied about constantly, and he says, if they treated your master that way, they're going to treat you that way too. Do you expect something different? And are we going to allow the contentiousness of the world and even the contentiousness of the church to stop us from doing the work which he's given us to do? Now is the day of salvation. It doesn't matter what we're facing. Greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. And we have got to stop acting as though we can be stayed or stopped by the problems that come up inevitably. Try to find an age where there weren't problems, where there wasn't suffering. We look at our day and we say, this is unlike any other time in history. No, it's not. It's the same as every other time in history. I know that not just from my own reading of, of history, but from the Word of God, which says all things are as they were before. You think something new has come? It's been here before, long ago. The problem is there's just no memory of those who came before by those who come after. Remember back to maybe high school or junior high when you Learn the charge of the light brigade poem. Half a league, half a league, half a league onward into the valley of death, rode the 600. You know who was fighting in that war? The Russians and the Ukrainians. They've been fighting for a thousand years. You think it's going to stop? But... As true as it is that sin is always going to be with us, hardship is always going to be with us, situations that we don't want to find ourselves in will always be with us. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the favorable time. Do you understand the promise that's built in there? There has never been a better time in your life to do the work for which the Lord has called you in your vocation than today. And don't think that the problems that you see facing you are going to stop that. I know I... I tend to be the kind of person who works when I'm sick and other things. My wife absolutely hates that. She says, rest, get over this so that you don't spread it and all that. And certainly COVID is, has changed my behavior a bit. But I keep saying to her, I may never feel better than I do today. This may be the best that I ever feel for the rest of my life. I've got to do something. She always says, oh, I hate that attitude. So do I, honestly. But you know what? I've watched it happen for, gen for a couple of generations of people that I've served. I can't tell you how many times in my life as a pastor I had people who told me about the plans that they had for their future, the things that they were going to do once they finally had time, once this finally got under control, once the kids were grown, once these troubles stopped, once the job got in hand or whatever else. And they never got to those days. How much time do you think we have? Now granted, in reality, only the devil is running out of time. But for those things that the Lord has allowed us to put our hands to, now is the favorable time. 
Paul's phrase could be translated, now is the best time. Now you've got everything on your side. Now is the day of salvation. What are we waiting for? Of course, that leads to another problem and another question. What do we do with our fear, with our fatigue? What do we do with the fact that we've already been going through a lot of battles? We're already tired from this. You don't have to be very old to be tired of the fight. Where do you go with it? I know that one of the most striking things to me when I was serving in the parish, and I still watch it to this day as I sit in the pews, a very uncomfortable place for me, by the way, one of the most striking things is watching those folks who have endured hardship for 80 or 90 years coming forward to the altar with canes and walkers having beaten, having beaten back the devil through the grace and gifts of God, having applied their baptism, having received the forgiveness of sins, and having stood up against world wars, against hardship, sorrow, economic depression, loss of family, loss of friends, who still know where their salvation is found, and they make their way forward to the altar to kneel if they still can, and there receive the promise of grace, the forgiveness of sins, the Savior of the world, who doesn't tell them that it's now going to become easy, but he tells them, you're my own. You're my own in this land. You're my own in this kingdom. You're my own in this place. And I will never leave you or forsake you. Your fight is my fight. Your life is my life. Your story is my story. Because you are my church. Now, is the proper time. Now is the day of salvation. What do we do when we've gotten in our own way? When by our sins, our attitudes, our actions, we've proven that we're not up to the challenge of the day, that we fall victim to the same sins as everybody else. And we don't deserve to say that we stand on the side of the righteous. There, too, we look to the cross. And we hear him proclaim, you are holy. Holy doesn't mean upright in behavior. It means set apart by God for his purposes. The quick way of saying it, you belong to him. Nothing, not beatings or imprisonment, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, or anything else is going to take that promise away. Because it's not just for your work and not just for the world, but for you. In the midst of whatever you're confronting, in the midst of whatever you stand in, no matter how hard your heart has become, no matter how calloused over and beaten down you feel, no matter how depressed and, and filled with languish and anxiety and hardship and sorrow, now is the day of your salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen.